Howdy everyone, my name is Avram Plager and welcome back to my Blender tutorials for 3D modeling. Uh, I do apologize that I haven't done a tutorial in Blender for a little bit, um, but today's tutorial is going to cover at least an introduction into sculpting. Um, sculpting is has a wide variety of tools that you can use, um, so I'm only going to go over the first few sections of that. Um, but to begin, you'll open up your traditional UI, and instead of going into general, you'll go into sculpting. Upon clicking sculpting, you see you have a sphere opened up with, if you zoom in, you can see there's a lot of very small faces, and this is good for getting a general idea of how to sculpt. So now what we want to do is, in this tab over to the right here, we want to click this upper tab here that says activate tool and workspace settings. This shows you all of the values that you have for your tool. With Sculpt, you have a whole lot of different tools that have different properties. Some of them have the same, but a lot, most of them have different properties. The most simple one that you have is Draw. Draw has these properties. You have a radius, a radius unit. The radius unit changes, um, right now I have it set to view. So in coordination with our view, you'll see that the size of this dot that we have on our cursor doesn't change. But if we set that to scene, we see this changes with our view, but it doesn't change with the size of the object. So if you're making more perspective changes, you want to set that to view, and that sets the number of pixels on your screen. So right now it's at the 57 pixels radius on our screen. On the scene, you have 0 0.038 meters, which is just a distance measurement. Strength you have, which is a non-unit uh, value. This can be decimal up to one integer. You can set any strength you want. Uh, you have direction, which is add or subtract. Subtract depresses uh, into the object and add uh, impresses out of the object. Normal radius tells you uh, how far out um, from the brush it's going to actually have an effect. Hardness details um, how smooth the overall uh, brush is going to be. Then auto smooth defines what radius outside of the brush uh, you're going to have drawn up with it to uh, create a smoother effect. So right now we have a radius of 0 0.038 meters that's set to our scene. We want to have a little bit of bigger brush that we can see what we're doing. And we'll set the strength about 0.5. Now you can see if we take this tool and we just click and drag, it'll start making a shape along our cursor. You can see if we go outside of our vantage point, it stops drawing. And if we come back in, it starts drawing again. If you make a section crossing other sections, it makes this overlap feature. So make sure that when you are drawing, if you do intentionally want uh, sections that are drawn over other sections, then you can do that. Um, but make sure that if you don't want lumpy sections on your uh, structure that you will have to fix later, that you don't overlap lines. If you want to undo something, just press Ctrl Z on your keyboard. We can go back to our uh, traditional uh, viewpoint. So let's go back to scene and let's up the size of that brush again. And now we'll make one line that's added and then one line that's subtracted. You can see if we look around that this makes kind of a smooth object into it. If we up the strength you can see that the uh, that the strength of our tool is much upped, and just with that one stroke, we have a very very large ledge. Conversely, uh, it's the same thing with add; it makes a very large edge there, and we'll undo those changes for now. You want to make sure that for the most part you're always editing in scene because this makes it a lot more standard and nothing that you're doing changes while you're moving around. 
Now I'll show off the auto smooth feature. You can see if we have no auto smooth, that that's a fairly sharp line. But if we set some auto smooth in, it creates a little bit softer profile and drags up some external edges with it. If we have hardness, then that's going to have a more pixelated feature to it and it's not going to be as smooth. And the normal radius, usually you don't have to uh, change. Uh, this doesn't have much of an effect uh, unless you're doing a little bit more advanced. Those are all the features in there. There's a few other features open here that I'll show off in a future tutorial specifically. Um, but with that, I'll show off some of the other tools. You also have Draw Sharp, which creates a much sharper line there. We'll up the diameter of this tool. Uh, you can see this makes a very sharp uh, draw feature. You can see again, if you cross lines, uh, that it makes a hatch feature. And this feature again works both add and subtract. When you're using Draw Sharp, I wouldn't recommend using Auto Smooth because that basically uh, denies the actual purpose of this tool. Um, but again, you can use them both add on subtract, change the strength, set it to view or scene, uh, and change the radius. Now we'll go over to clay. Clay is akin to um, as if you were just putting clay onto the object. Um, it's a very soft feature, and as you can see here, it kind of blends in with the shape uh, and done, doesn't add much texture to the shape at all. This tool is mostly just if you're adding material to the shape uh, that you want to sculpt. This tool is really good um, because as you go along it doesn't make actually much of a hatch feature if you're crossing lines. It really just adds material. Uh, and as you can see uh, we do have a plain offset which um, sets how much offset you want from the object. You can subtract or add. Uh, you can set a hardness, or you can set it to be more of a soft feature. You can see if we don't have any hardness on, this is a really smooth tool, and it doesn't create any sharp lines. If we set the auto smooth up, you almost can't see the tool, um, but this is really good if you want to make some sort of smooth shape while still adding material, you can use that. And see as we go along, almost visually there's no lines to be seen, but if we switch further on you can see we did add some material. Now we'll reverse all the changes we made. And now we can go on to clay strips. Clay strips adds on rectangular patterns. As you can see, uh, as we rotate our mouse, it rotates the actual rectangular pattern. And this does has a ha does have a uh, sort of a hatch pattern as you go along. Um, but again, like the other clay feature that we have, it's not as strong as other features. You do want to make sure you have some auto smooth on though, because this does tend to be fairly pixelated since it's a rectangular shape. Uh, make sure you can have a large radius if you need. Uh, and this again pretty much is just used to add material to your object uh, in the form of strips. You have thumb, which is essentially if you have uh, just take for example if this ball was made out of clay and you were to just shove your thumb through it. Uh, as you can see this accumulates material at the tip of our mouse shape. Um, so as we go along you can see it creates an indent sort of in front of the shape. If we change it to um, 
And again, this doesn't have an add feature. This is one of the ones that does not have an add feature. This is only subtract. Um, but we can set an auto smooth. And this makes it a little bit of a smoother feature. We can set the hardness down. That also makes it a lot smoother. But one of the best tricks that you can do to make this much of a smoother shape uh, is to increase the radius. Since the tool itself is fairly sharp, and you, if you have a large radius, uh, it makes a smoother shape. Also, if you have more subdivisions in a certain section, uh, then that'll make a much smoother shape as well. But do take note, the more subdivisions you make, the slower your computer will run. Um, I don't have many subdivisions in this shape and I don't want to because I'm running on a Surface Pro 4 right now and that is not a very fast computer, especially for this type of uh, software. Um, but if you do have a very powerful computer, I would recommend upping the subdivisions on this and then sculpting will be a lot smoother. You have layer, which akin to clay thumb uh, is essentially for adding material, but it's more of a, more like the draw feature uh, it doesn't create as much freeform shapes. Um, and again, you can up the radius. And this makes a much more um, refined shape, uh, whereas the clay layers um, would make much more of a organic shape. This is good if you want to make much more um, refined shapes. We can up the radius. We can even set it to subtract on this tool. And this will subtract material. And as you can see, this is a very refined shape. It doesn't look very organic. Um, but this is good, however, if you're making uh, characters and you want to make faces. Faces, I've found, uh, take a lot less organic shaping uh, and much more technical shaping. You have all the same tools, you have hardness, auto smooth, uh, and then height determines the height of that layer. So if we want a much uh, softer layering feature, or if we do want to add a whole lot of material, we can do that. Um, but again, this does run pretty slow, and on my computer it's not even picking it up. So make sure that you do have it set uh, fairly low. Like there, again, it is picking it up, but if I change it much higher, it won't. Uh, this is, again, um, perspective of the object you're using. So if the height is much higher than the object, then it won't actually do the feature. So there we go, that's the layer tool. Uh, and I'll go over these next three tools in this tutorial. We have inflate, which basically takes a section of uh, of your object, and it basically takes it, and it's as if you were blowing up a balloon from the inside, only with a rubber band on, so it only selects this area. And it, you can see if you click further, um, this doesn't have repetitive modeling like in a feature uh, such as Mesh Mixer, um, whereas you would have in Mesh Mixer where, where if you just uh, press and hold, it would keep inflating. This does not. You have to repetitive, repetitively click, and that'll draw it out more. Or if you want, you can set the strength higher, and that'll, um, as you go along, uh, it'll do much more of a strong feature. You can set a bit of an auto smooth to it, uh, and that'll make it much more of a smooth feature. Um, akin to, say, a pillow. Um, again, you have deflate and inflate. And so if you deflate, you can see it deflates an object into there. Uh, rewinding all of our changes. Uh, you can see that the uh, tool here is very spherical. Um, it won't do any rectangular fall off or any parabolic fall off. Um, this really is just spheres that are projected from your shape. You have blob, which uh, almost like inflate, but uh, this is used to create multiple repetitive uh, blobs on your shape. Um, this tool is automatically a lot stronger 
and this is good if you're creating, say, a character with warts, or you're creating sort of a modeled surface pattern. Uh, this can be used for that. And then you have, finally, Crease. Uh, crease is almost like the sharp draw, but this is a feature of its own. Um, we'll turn the strength up so you can see exactly what we're doing. Um, we'll actually turn the radius down and the pinch up. And now you can see this sort of creates a subtracted line into our object and it pinches the routing material to follow. You can also add to create sort of a ridge there. It's almost as if you were pinching uh, paper. It's a lot different than clay work. Um, when you're doing these sculpting features, put yourself in the mindset of uh, like for crease or for draw or for things like that, you, you want to put yourself in the mindset of either working with uh, like a paper ball or a clay ball or something like that, and that'll make this a lot easier. Uh, um, but that's just an introduction into these first few tools here. As you can see, there's a lot of different sculpting tools that'll take a while to go over. So I'll make this into a multi-part series where I'll do, uh, uh, sorry for the cut, um, but thank you for watching. Um, I'm very impressed with the results from my playthrough video the other day. Uh, I'm really happy that y'all liked it. Um, so I'll be continuing those videos. Um, but this is just an introduction into uh, some of the sculpt features in Blender. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different features to go through that I'll review all of them. Uh, so don't worry about that. But this is going to be a multi-part series um, because there's so many tools to go over. Um, but with that, thank you all for watching. Um, I really do appreciate y'all's uh, comments and liking my videos. Um, but with that, really, thank you all for watching. Um, remember to like and subscribe and share with your friends and family.